Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm, of course, Nick McDaniel, and as always, I am joined by Myron. How are you doing, buddy? Welcome back to another wonderful episode. Uh, and for some reason, Nick, I'm craving Italian food. Our little pre-match conversation, uh, naturally. You know, naturally. But I got to go to the bathroom. Somebody won't get out of it, though. So I'll have to wait till after the show to try it again. Yeah. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, listen, it, it, I, we're not going to discuss that on air. Uh, we, we, it was one of the topics we discussed. But uh, maybe listen. We save the good stuff for air, not the gossip. Uh, no, if we do, look, we might talk about it. We might touch on it. But if we did, it would, of course, would be on YouTube is where we would do it. Uh, that's a paywall content if I've ever heard one. Uh, make sure you're heading over there to YouTube. You know, like it, subscribe to the page, turn your notifications on, all that good stuff. Heck, even become a member. That's right. You can sign up and become a member. Uh, now, if you're at that $5 level or higher, you get the shows early. And then, of course, now we've got some bonus content coming out on those higher tiers as well. So make sure you're doing all that. And by the way, patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Still the same. We're still there as well if you prefer that method either YouTube or Patreon, check us out, man. Like I said, don't just uh, subscribe there. Become a member so you can take care of all the extra benefits that come out of there as well, man. Uh, look, I thought about doing something this weekend, man, an instant live reaction, uh, but I was on the road, so I didn't get to do it, believe it or not, um, on Saturday because we left. I mean, we went to oh, uh, well. an indie show, but uh, <laughs> I wanted to do an instant reaction to Backlash. Yeah. So obviously we didn't get to, so we're going to dive into this. before. Look, we are going to... Look, when did tapped you out pod at, hold on, tapped out pod at gmail.com. We are going to get to the mailbag questions. Keep those coming. It makes our life so much easier oh, gotcha. for, for, for the episodes. Um, but yeah, tapped out pod, gmail.com. Uh, and we'll get to the questions in a minute. But look, let's just save the hassle. We got like 15 about asking us about backlash. So I'm like, all right, we, we just know we're going to talk about backlash anyway. So yeah. um, I watched it like live. I actually did watch it live. Came on at one o'clock. Remember, I watched it, but when you got here, you asked me, and I said, "Oh, oh I that's right, it. yeah, yeah." I forgot it was in France. Okay, so I waited until Sunday uh, yeah. I, after we got home Saturday. I didn't. I just came over to your house after uh, you were finishing it up. I don't. I don't like spoilers, so I didn't ask you any questions. Um, and we did our show. Went our show. Had a great time. Southern Fried is always a blast. If you're ever in the Monroe area. Uh, if you're ever in Georgia, uh, just talk to us. We'll tell you where to go for the best shows in independent wrestling. Uh, if you're wherever you are, look up independent wrestling. There's always great shows out there, folks. Uh, and that's where you see your stars begin, by the way. That's where you're going to see your stars of tomorrow start. We've seen so many people uh, work their way up to the big time from there. But uh, so Sunday, I sit down and I watch SmackDown from France. And I got myself a little taste of it. I'm like, wow. Those people like wrestling. They like wrestling in France. I'm like, I didn't think French people would like wrestling. And then when Backlash, when I turned Backlash on, wow. Those folks were sure happy to get a pay-per-view, Nick. I think they were happy to have just WWE, period. Yeah. I, look, was it a bonus that it was a pay-per-view? A hundred, or PLE, excuse me? Yes, 100%. Uh, that crowd was so bananas that... There was a moment where I had it on. I had it on in the living room, and I was doing laundry kind of simultaneously. So I had it on in the bedroom as well. So I actually went, and my wife kept watching it in the living room <laughs> as I went off. And I went in here and did laundry and stuff. I was folding some laundry in the bedroom. She continued to watch the the PLE on the main TV, and was talking about how good it was as far as the crowd reaction. I don't even know. We were joking about it. I don't even. She, she goes, hey, what are they chanting? I'm like, why would I know? Like, I, I mean, I don't speak French. We've been married for like 12 years. If I was like, oh, this is what they're saying. Wouldn't you be more surprised if I busted out that I knew French? Um, <laughs> I don't understand the Cody Rhodes song in English. How the hell am I supposed to understand it in French? Well, they they that's the thing. They went out of their way to they learn the song in English. They're singing it in English. Uh, so Kudos to them, 
but like so much so that that I, I, I literally found an article that explained that when AJ and Cody wrestled, one of the things they were saying it has something to do with a like a thing that's over in France where they're like, he is, he is, he's simply phenomenal, or something like that, whatever. They were chanting it because he's phenomenal, AJ Styles. And uh, yeah. you could see at moments even AJ, like, having to, like, hold back. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he knew, like, uh, this, is, this is really, really cool. To the point later, I think it was like a day or two later, he acknowledged it on Twitter. Like, how great that the crowd heel. was. The, the heel, heel said, acknowledged it. Right, exactly. Um and I will say this, this is, might be a controversial take. That crowd was so great, they actually made the PLE better than it was. Oh, yeah. I have to agree 100%. I have to agree because they brought my excitement level up. The crowd was so electric. Sitting here, not even watching it live, Okay. I was a lot less likely to fast forward like I typically do when I see stuff I don't really think, you know, stuff I wasn't interested in. I typically kind of eh, 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 fast forward a little bit. No, I didn't. I wanted to see every second for every crowd reaction, and I was so in tune with it. And by the time that main event got here, oh, Nick. Man, it was like a big fight field. And I got that picture. Did you see that picture I posted? I, I screen capped it right off of the I stopped the the pay-per-view. I took I took my screen cap and I cut it out. It was two boys from Georgia in the ring, like a big boxing fight in the middle of France, just like a boxing main event. Samantha Irvin was in the ring and it was just beautiful. They were in France. Everything just oh man. And then when you find out that that gear that AJ was wearing was a tribute gear to the gear he wore 21 years ago when he faced Dusty mm-hmm. in TNA, and the the super talented people at Global Global Wrestling Wear made that gear, and I've posted that link. Oh my God, I just and just the fact I know those people and and the amazing work they do, but they made gear. That was tribute gear, and AJ wore tribute gear to when he wrestled his father 21 years ago. And AJ can still go. I mean, AJ's phen- phenomenal, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just, it, like you said, was it the best pay per view you've ever seen? It, here's, here's why I asked you that. So I was in, again, one room during the women's match. My wife was in the living room talking to her sister. So they had the sound basically off. It was almost it was it wasn't muted, but it was one like when you turn it down to the point, it's one thing up from having no volume. I came out, and she told me she didn't like that women's match. It was not that good. They were making a lot of mistakes in the match, and stuff. she was pointing out like they missed a spot here and they missed the spot. And I was like, I had the sound on in the bedroom, and I was like. Really? I thought it was pretty good. Like, what did I miss? <laughs> and she, she, literally to the point, she said, you need to go back and rewatch this with, and watch it again. And I did. And I guess what's crazy? I did see all the stuff she was talking about. I never first of all, a bit of it. First of all, kudos for the wife. Like, pointing out, like, she missed a spot here. She missed a spot. There. I was like, That's pretty, pretty impressive. Kudos. But uh, the reason why? We were both, you probably as Caught well. In the moment. They were the chanting, the screen, the crowd was in it. It was, yeah, better than Hogan Rock, right? We go back to that yeah. same match always. Turn <laughs> the volume off. Mute that match. It's it's not that great. I, so I actually muted the match when the women were wrestling, and she's 100% correct. That it I was, was like, it wasn't that. the heat of the moment. But, but, but seriously, how – this just goes to show how WWE can take a talent like Jade Cargill who's not the best wrestler, but they put her with a great wrestler and they package her right. And they take her time. They take her, they don't put her on the camera. They get you, they get her in the right spots. They work her. They put her in the right package. They work her in slowly. They build a massive, like this massive desire for people to see her. This, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Um, where people are so excited about Jade Cargill, this buildup for Jade Cargill, and you don't notice 
if you're a wrestling fan, you don't even notice Jade Cargill's faults when she's there in France. You're just so excited to see Storm. Bianca Belair kills it. Uh, you're watching. You're watching Damage Control. Oh, it was so great! You're excited about seeing Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair on all the programs now because she's a representative for everything. You don't care that she might not be the best, and then you take Mercedes Monet, who's a phenomenal wrestler, and you you botch her handling, and I don't even think people are as excited about her anymore. It's just it just goes into show how how much better Triple H is handling things and how much better Triple H is handling people and taking people to France and putting them in these environments and the excitement they're building and how hot things are right now. It's just that damn good. Well, they were hot. I think it might boil down to the fact that we're just spoiled here. That yeah. we it's uh just we see it enough. Uh, listen, I have a whole other thing behind the paywall that I said, you know, I can't say a lot of this stuff on the air because it's not very um, endearing probably to a North American fan base um, as to why, why uh, other reasons why we're just, it's not just spoiled. Could just be other things societally that make us that we're just, we can't, those people just loved it. They just enjoyed it and they were having fun with it. They weren't, clearly they weren't, breaking things down to the degree and look, hey, yes. we're probably part of that fault as well when we just think about it. Um, to the point that, look, in the in the press conference, they were asked, like, you know, coming back and Hunter's answer was tremendous. He said, I get international emails and stuff all the time about how do we get WWE to Italy, to Germany, da, da, da. And the answer is real simple. And he pointed and goes, do that. Ah. Like if if you know you give a fan reaction because he was like we'll be back to France I, I like I can guarantee you we're coming back to France um, that's a thing because you give those reactions that's how you get like and we said it I, was this a year ago maybe two that I made the comment of I wouldn't be stunned if it even like we th- we're worried about like PLEs being a travel thing I wouldn't be stunned if we have extended runs of just Raws and SmackDowns no. and stuff eventually down the road of, hey, we're going to be, hey, guys, look, I hate to tell you this, but we're going to be in Germany for two weeks. Like, we're going to be, or not Germany, but, you know, we're going to be Germany. We're going to go to well, a whole England, tour. You know, like, Raw, SmackDowns, and everything just looping through Europe or something like that. I would not be surprised in those, you know. Well, they did that, that was- massive house show in England. They did these massive gates at house shows. They did these massive gates at Raw's and Smith. What was the gate number on this pay-per-view? Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing. It was uh, so they're kind of you're having to estimate to some degree because they ba- it was eleven thousand some odd change people. It was the biggest arena show they've ever done as far as gate dollars go. Um, so it depends, and the reason I, it does matter. Uh, there, there is a show when you adjust for inflation, it would be four million. So are you talking over that number or are you talking in the history there was yeah, so it's high threes or low fours is the guess on the gate. The estimate was the average ticket price was around three hundred bucks for the average ticket at that show. That's what they're guesstimating on. Look, we'll get the number eventually. We just didn't have it at this at the point of what's recording. Three hundred bucks was the average ticket price? The average ticket, right, yeah. So so that means the front ring front you know, front row was probably massively high, the lower ones were and it cheaper. Was packed. Yeah, and um, it was packed. Yeah, and they're going to uh, Germany. I can't wait to see how Germany does. They've been to Scotland before for Clash of the Castle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've been to Saudi before, but Germany is going to be the the real test. If Germany does like France did, man. well, look, I, I look. They've clearly look. Nick Khan's come out and said he thinks for now the big four are safe. Like they'll probably stay a North American show for now, uh, but I think. Long term, I wouldn't hold my breath to say, "Hey, what if the Rumble was in London or the you know eventually?" Uh, so I would not be stunned if we see that. But that's does that's that affect take right us, now. Though, Nick? Does that affect me and you, no. two guys that are going to watch it on the network? No, you're just going to watch it whenever. Like I said, I just happened to be free because I was doing stuff during the day because we had a show that night. So I was like, "Hey, I can watch it while it's on," and I did. Um, but look, overall, though, look, you know, we, we haven't even gotten to the question, so we got to get rolling here. Um, uh, we joked about it a little bit. Uh, was the show predictable? Pretty much. 
it pretty much ran what we kind of guesstimated last week on the show. Uh, the only thing we really, really missed, uh, I we just assumed it would be Jacob Fatu, but it turned out to be Tonga Loa uh, as the uh, the new Bloodline member showing up. Um, I, I want to save, I want to table this for next week uh, because we are already running long. Where do we think this is going with the Bloodline? I think the sides now are, cl- I think, Sooner than like, I think within the reason I tabled this, I think within the next week or two. Oh yeah, the lines are clearly defined. But how about Michael Cole saying Japan, IWGP, uh, New Japan, all the places they'd been, and acknowledging other wrestling promotions? What a what a time we're living in, Nick. That they do that. Well, it's that that the WWE is finally embracing it. That's the big thing is that they're finally embracing. Other promotions do it all the time. I think now it's just cool to see WWE finally embracing that and taking that on. That's it's it's cool to see. I I will agree with you 110. percent I I'm, I'm a fan. So yes. But uh, listen, we're going to talk okay. about a little bit next Question week. A little one. bit. Question yeah. one. Allen from Salt Creek, Nevada. What do you guys think of WrestleMania coming to Las Vegas? And is that a trip you guys will consider making? I've never been to Vegas, Nick. I know you have. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to go to Vegas, Nick. Tell me about Vegas. Uh, married Nick's never been to Vegas. So there's that. There's a disclaimer there. Single Nick has gone several times, uh, but married Nick has not been. So it will be a far different trip, I assure you, this time if we go than it was last well, time. You know, Myron doesn't drink anymore. It has nothing uh, to do with drinking, but okay. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, as a, as a, well, I'm not going to go into anything. Yeah, so well, well, yeah. It literally, well, what happens not, in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, I know we have a lot of female listeners. Um, <laughs> listen, listen, April, like I could, <laughs> like I could say anything about my past that would, that would offend women. Um, right. but man, I'm interested, Nick. I might actually make this trip. I've always yeah. wanted to go to Vegas. This would be a great look. Vegas, is, look, I've talked about going with my wife so it's it's not that it can't be a fun trip for all the different types april 19th 20th 2025 easter weekend folks yes um i know that was a big why when the world would they they'd already talked about pushing it back to get away from march madness that was a huge thing uh but specifically vegas did ask for this date apparently uh because i don't know if you know a lot of things about vegas but uh Easter weekend would be a slow weekend for Las Vegas. <laughs> um, so if they can pump that stadium full of people, you're basically going to be Vegas, the, the hub of, cause this is what, this is mania. We all think of mania. It's not two nights anymore. It's literally a week. It's WrestleMania world that fanatics puts on now SmackDown and the hall of fame. Oh, and you're going to get an NXT show. And all you're going to get shows. night one, night two, all the indie shows, by the way, you still got Raw on Monday. Literally just hammered with shows all weekend. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. This is a vacation of my dreams. And Vegas wouldn't be full of regular Vegas people. So it would be wrestling would be in charge. It would be an all wrestling Vegas theme. There were Vegas would not have seen that many black t shirts, I bet, in forever. <laughs> Um, all I'm going to tell you, there's some, there's some, there's some shoe shows there that potentially could do massive business that week. Well, all the virgins in town, the, the, the shoe shows again could do a lot of business. We'll leave it at that. I do want to ask you a question though, cause we do got to keep at a decent pace here. Uh, by the way, it's the second one in Vegas. It is not the first mania. People always forget about, um, four, in '93, Caesars. Remember, it was the Caesars Palace, little Caesars when, when they were when Undertaker rode out with the with the little vulture thing on his thing. Anyway, um, Allegiant Stadium is the Raider Stadium. That's where the, obviously the WrestleMania is going to be. Um, then, of course, Raw and SmackDown will be in the arena, hands down. That's a given. The Sphere comes into play because it sphere. was asked. Somebody did ask the, uh, Nick Khan that, and they was kind of like, "Yeah, probably." What's in the sphere? That's the one that's got the big giant. You've never seen it? I've seen it, but what's in it? It's like they do concerts and they do events and stuff inside of it. Uh, Dana White says at some point they'll run a UFC fight in there. And at some point, I'm like, dude, it's a, if you want to do something unique, 
they've talked like I know NXT is going to run uh, one of their shows out there in the uh, Apex, which is one of UFC's buildings uh, that they do. They did fights in in that period when you couldn't do much anywhere else. So how cool would it be? I'm not saying they are, by the way, I'm not saying it, but how cool would it be if NXT ran a show inside the sphere? How about cool to have a main event in the sphere? Hey, go out on a limb. Somebody like GCW run a show in there. Like one of these super indies go in there and run, you know, that would be cool. I, I think if, if a show, a wrestling show is done in the sphere, I think this has to be your target date to make it happen because here's the thing on any regular week, you you're, are you worried about selling this thing out this week? You ain't worried about selling something out in that building. I mean, they could get an Andy like AEW in there. Could happen. Yeah. So, um, yes, is the answer to the question. That's a long winded. Yes. This could be a def definitive trip that we could be interested in for sure. Myron's interested. Myron's interested. I'm hoping I'm not. I'm hoping I'm still uh, on my sabbatical then. that's That would be my goal. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but here's a neat question, and it's a very topical question right now. Brian from Wesson, Mississippi, where they make the oil. That's where they, they drill it the, for the Wesson oil. Mm -hmm. Um what do you guys think about all the Wyatt Six rumors about new members? Uh, Here's the thing. I, I'm going to give a really unpopular opinion, I think. I wish they just didn't do this. Me too. Me too. This is the most unpopular opinion we'll ever have, Nick. But please elaborate on yours before I start on my rant. I understand the desire i was going to say needs but needs a bad word i understand the desire <laughs> to want to pay homage tribute call it what you will to the bray wyatt thing i do um i look i know we differ a lot of an opinion on the bray wyatt on the fiend character i get that um i just don't know that you can do anything without him that's going to live up to the standard of it um, if that's a, if that's a, is that, is, is that the right way to, am I saying this right? Does yes. that make sense to you? You're saying it uh, seems like a cheap cash in is what no, it seems No, like no, no, no. I, I like, I understand. Cause I think at their core, here's the thing, not, a, this is going to be a popular opinion. If Vince was still in charge, I would agree with what you just said. Okay. Because now that Hunter's in charge, I can see with the family and everybody involved Literally, they are trying to pay honor and tribute okay. to the Wyndham okay. with the Bray thing. I just don't think anything you do is going to live up to what people want it to be. So, therefore, I think it's going to be disappointing. Now, I think people are going to be more generous in the leeway they give it because of what they're trying to do. I still just don't know that you're going to be successful in this. So, I just wish this, like, if you want to pay honor and tribute him, put him in the hall of fame, put it, you know, something like do, do something like that. There's gotta be a way, but just continuing the, the story. I don't know that that's the right way to go. Mm. Uh, you know, the thing is they, they did that special, that, that the, the, the documentary yeah. documentary. And I'm hoping that was a tribute, not just like a barometer to see if there was any mileage left on the gimmick. Uh, we've looked at the people that they're talking about. Bo Dallas. Okay. Maybe he could be that howdy guy, but Bo Dallas was not the charismatic leader of a faction type. Nikki Cross. I've always liked Nikki Cross. I don't know where she'd fit in. I've loved Dexter Loomis. He would be perfect for a spooky faction. But Bo Dallas, does he get leadership because he's his brother? Mm-hmm. Joe Gacy, he kind of fits in, but I mean, is this just if you're weird and you're cult like, you get sucked into the yes. group? That's that. That's kind of my concern. Yes, um, Eric Rowan. Okay, makes sense because he was part of the. He was in the group. It. Alexa Bliss is phenomenal for this kind of thing. But the thing is, you're right. They're just taking people who had spooky gimmicks in this thing, this list we've got, and they're like, check, 
check, check. Okay, you're in based on this this list we have. And that's not going to work. The whole thing was organic and it had a gimmick. What about what about Braun Strowman and all these other people that were it's just if it were me not buying it. Agree or disagree. I would just do Bo Dallas doing something with Alexa Bliss because that hits the core of it all and just not don't like don't worry about the others. Don't it don't it doesn't have to be the Wyatt Six. It's just just no. run its thing. I wouldn't add I would not hire Rowan back. Braun Strowman's already on payroll. Alexa Bliss is a dynamic character and just the only one I would hire back would be Bo Dallas and I would do the three of them and that would be it. I don't listen, here's the thing. I don't mind again, because Eric Rowan would make sense. Look, they've hired him back. It is what it is. I mean, so I oh, mean like have? if you Oh yeah, he's hired back. Yeah, he's hired back. So he's coming. So my thing is, okay. I mean, he. If you said Braun was going to be involved, Rowan was going to be involved. Okay, they make sense because they were involved in the beginning. That's why Alexa Bliss makes sense. All the others, I don't think you add anything. But that's you know that's just well, they're still on payroll. Uh, Cross, Loomis, and Gacy are still on payroll, right? Yeah. And I, like I said, I've always thought Dexter Loomis was was an amazing talent. I thought he he had that look. He had the whole thing. His gimmick that he had in NXT, and even when he was up on the main roster, worked. Yeah. Just let him keep being that, you know. But yeah, anyway. He was scary, Nick. He was always scary. Yeah. Just like our friend Richard. Yeah, William. But yeah, William scary things. Well, overall, Richard's you... the one that wrote the books. William's the one that does the podcast. Exactly. Check out William Scary Things over on YouTube, guys, and uh, here's a little something about it. Are you a fan of the strange, mysterious, and unusual? Do you enjoy stories told firsthand about creepy experiences? UFO encounters, ghostly apparitions, near-death and afterlife experiences, even parallel universes? Well, if so, you need to check out the YouTube channel William Scary Things. It is a new, albeit determined, channel. William was influenced as a kid by books, movies, stories, all that were passed down by his friends and family, and they all had a creepy theme. What started out as a scary story narration is now a long-form interview process with people who have experienced weird and unusual things firsthand. Do you want to hear about a house with the former owners that were laid to rest right in the front yard? Yeah, told by yours truly. Well, if so, William Scary's Things has you covered. How about a witness to the Phoenix Lights, probably the most renowned UFO sighting in modern history? Maybe you want to hear about a first-hand encounter with a ghostly apparition late one night with Eda Photo to boot. No problem. William's got you covered there, too. Were you a fan of the scary stories to tell in dark book series as a kid? Want to learn more about the Solway Firth Spaceman? Well, if so, it's all right there. So head on over to William Scary Things and check out his latest episodes and give him a like, subscribe to the channel. Heck, leave a comment. Trust me, there's nothing to be scared of. That's right, friends. Check out old William Scary Things over there on YouTube. On, down in the show notes, there's a link. Just click on it. You can jump over there, like, subscribe, turn those notifications on, just like you do on our stuff over on YouTube. But I tell you what, man, AEW's in another scary situation right now, Myron. That heads us right down into the next question. Oh, God. You know what's scary is all the damn phone calls I get while I'm trying to record this podcast. Sorry. Patrick from Benson, North Carolina, home of the North Carolina Hornets, if I'm not mistaken. That's an NBA team. Could TNT losing the NBA rights help or hurt AEW and its negotiations? They're going to be negotiating some basketball stuff. So what's our thing here, Nick? Tell me what we got going on here. Uh, well, look, uh, the, the rumors come out in the past week or so that uh, NBC could outbid TNT for the NBA uh, television rights. Some people – there and look, and I we discussed this a little bit prior to recording – about how it can, if, if your glass half full or half empty is going to depend on how you look at this, I think. On one take, you can say simply, it's going to help them because they're going to have all this money they're not going to spend for basketball that they'll be able to spend on something else. And AEW, at that point, will be 
pretty much one of their last live things they have available. And that's a, that's a huge plus, by the way. I don't people underestimate, overestimate, depending on which category you fall in, the importance of live television. So the easy answer is, hey, they got more money to spend. They can maybe throw more money at AEW. Um, maybe. Or, <laughs> here's the or, their ad revenue is going to be massively less because you're not going to have the NBA anymore. So they're going to have less money in general to spend. Oh, and by the way, you still got to buy something to fill that time slots that the NBA was in. So it's not like all that money is going to be free. But if it's also a smaller pool of money to spend, you know, to pull from, I don't know. It's it's really complicated, and it could be. It's 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 really a complicated mess to look at. Well, I mean, is AEW that expensive in the grand scheme of things? Uh, no, well, not in relation to the NBA. No, I mean nothing like that level. That's not the thing. But do they bring in ad revenue? Do you think they bring in ad revenue capable of of justifying their cost? That's the funny thing. Nobody knows. It's a private company. They don't have to give out a lot of that information. So it's a re- it, the answer is I, nobody knows. I mean, all we know uh, is how much Rio gets paid, right? Yeah, apparently that come out online. Yeah, that's a whole other complicated story. I mean, but, uh, it's going to take a couple pro- of big ads right there. Uh, something. That's, that's true. Um, so first thing is I would ask Dynamite on tbs does it move back to tnt if they lose nba because then does tnt become like the focused hey this is our wrestling channel dynamite rampage collision everything on tnt and they just go back to a bunch of big bangering you know reruns and all that kind of stuff on tbs um they just feel the like, wind uh, i mean listen big bang theory when wrestling's not on is essentially i always joke big bang theory's on tbs if wrestling's not on so, and that's true most of the time, it feels like. Never watched Um it. So, great show. Phenomenal show. I think you, you know. Anyway, um, but if your TNT gets all of it back, then how much money are you focusing on just putting all of your wrestling on one and making it the home of wrestling, TNT? Um, I could see that happening. That would be good. That's a good, solid, like, uh, motto. You want to see program, wrestling? Yeah. Put it on TNT. It's on TNT. Yeah, all of their products in one home. We, we've, we've had that conversation last week about maybe a potentially down the road streaming. If 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 Here's the thing. I think if TNT, Warner Brothers Discovery, let's start at the top and it funnels down. I think if they decide we lost basketball, we're going to make wrestling our thing. Program directors are just – Throw your hands up because you don't know what they're going to – what what vision do they have for their network? That's the ultimate thing that we just don't know. Anybody can tell you anything and everything, their opinion, and that's all they are, and this is ours. But let's say they decided we're going to go all in on wrestling. No pun intended. They're going to go all in on AEW. I think if they do, I think everything goes – I would say dump it all on TNT, and then, by the way, I think that's the – that's the one that seals the deal and gets them on max. Cause then you've got to go all in. You don't want them going yeah. anywhere else. Like we're yeah. just going to keep, this is, a, this is a thing. Cause I, this was hard. We had this conversation, uh, you know, a little bit before we started recording as well. It is hard for us t- to comprehend <laughs> at times. And I think that's, I think at most fans, it's the same way. AW's dead. Their ratings are falling through the toilet. Now look, attendance different conversation yeah that's a whole other conversation but attendance you know blah 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 but ratings are down they're dying they're at 700 but here's the thing they were still the number three show on cable by the way it was behind basketball two games about two basketball games that night so even though we as wrestling fans who think we know everything yes we're just if you don't know if you don't know everything start a podcast correct it they, we were super quick to jump on it that they're doom and gloom and they're 700,000 and picking on ratings and all that kind of stuff. But Warner Brothers Discovery executives are like, hey, we're happy. It was the number, number three show on cable. It's kind of like having an ugly wife that cooks good. You know, 
she may not be somebody you want to take out, but you're always happy with her when you come home to a nice home cooked meal. And that's well, what that's what I, you get with AEW. I don't she know if that analogy. You know, I, I it just may just be like, look, we just aren't. And I'm, and I'm, again, I'm blump, lumping us into this category uh, or what we think is important. It just isn't. Yeah. We're looking at what we think is important. Judging this guy's wife. No, we don't, we don't understand. We don't understand. Like, no, what I mean by we, we don't understand the numbers in the sense of we think 700,000 is a bad number, but it ain't like if they're, like, maybe if, they're only looking for five. Maybe they, maybe who, five was what they were promised. They, I, I, if you if you promised them you were going to be a top three, top five show on cable every night you were on, they haven't lied to you yet. Yeah, that's the way you got to look at it. I'm always like, we think the seven hundred thousand is just a bad number because it's declining. Now, would I be happy with it? No, I didn't say that either. Here's the ultimate problem they face. I think the ultimate problem at their hands right now is you are in it, you are in looks of declining states of a lot of metrics. Uh, pay-per-view buys, I'd have to do a little more digging. I think they're still, eh, um, but they're good enough, probably. The attendance being down and the ratings going down simultaneously could be a challenge during your negotiations this fall. You just picked a bad time to be on a downswing. That's all I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying they're dead. I'm not saying they're, I'm not doom and gloom guy, but you are in a slump and it's not, it was a bad time to be in the slump. That's what I think more important than anything. I hope they do well. I know, I know I pick at them because I don't understand it. And I know I criticize them because it's not for me. And I try, but I'm old and old people tend to not understand things and criticize stuff they don't understand. I know it's for the younger people or the people that like that kind of thing, but I don't wish them bad. I just, I just hope they do. I, I hope they figure it out. I hope they get this contract together. I hope they do good. I hope they get what they want out of it. I just hope losing basketball isn't the kicker for them. You know, I hope they they do well for it if they lose basketball. Um, I don't understand this next one. Our friend Marshall from Bay City, Michigan, he asked a question that you had to fill me in on. I missed this one all together. Uh, based on Tony Khan's comments, do you think AEW could actually use Jags players? Uh, so for international listeners, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the NFL team that the Khans own. Uh, so that's, I, I, when I saw the Jags players, they like, what does that even mean? So we had to go back to uh, Kevin Green, Reggie White, all the other football players who have guest starred in wrestling storylines over the years. Dude, if you go back to the, the the days of Wahoo McDaniel and, you know, and the, all those guys that were football players and they wrestled, bre- football players and wrestling go together like peanut butter and jelly. Yes. So I, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this question, to be honest with you, because I think it's real simple. Yes. Um, especially if they're wrestling fans and they want to be involved. Um, it gets it super easy to get the owner's approval. Yeah. Because that's usually your biggest obstacle is the NFL team letting them do that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if dad owns the team, it's a lot easier to get that oh, approval, I think. God, I would just hate to see it if his, if his son – Ruined one of his big million dollar contract guys doing some of his stupid wrestling shit. Um, they, you know, you got you got to protect them. They always have in the long run, and I think they they would have to go out of their way to make sure they were protected in general. But so answer is yes. I, I can't. I I think it's a win win if they did it. To be honest with you, if I don't know helps, who I would use. It might be time to pull out some stops to help. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Okay, guys. Let's get on into the in some more meat. Justin from Port St. Lucie, Florida. I need to go to Florida for vacation. Do you guys have any early AEW double or nothing thoughts? Um, I think I'm more on the nothing part. You have some doubles, Nick. May 26th, Swerve versus Cage. That's Kristen Cage. You had to tell me that. I thought it was Brian Cage for the AEW title. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? What do you think? Um, Look, the card in general, the four matches they've put out, I mean, 
they are what they are. Um, I, I do I, look Christian Cage. By the way, I will tell people this, and I will stand, you know, on this pulpit. I will tell people all the time, Christian Cage is doing some of the best work he's ever done in yes. AEW. Yes, um, I agree. So I'm down because I'm hoping this helps, you know, Swerve get the momentum he needs. Um, because I we joked about I think they waited too long to make yeah. him champion. He needs something to kind of get a push behind him, and I think I this is a good him. opportunity. I don't, uh, I don't get Swerve. Just he doesn't touch me, you know. Not in a not in a. I mean, listen, hold on, hold on. I think. It, again, this is the epitome of the it's not for you. Yes. I think he, you know, he's for a different demo. And I think that, you know, I get it. I, I think he's super entertaining, he's super athletic. Um, I dig the promos. I mean, there's lots of stuff about Swerve that I'm a fan of. Um, but I am also fair, I think, in saying I feel like he has lost some steam. Yeah. Um, well, they're a the bad other- steamer. AEW blows the steam out of people and lets it waste, and then they pull the trigger. They don't ever uh, seem to pull the trigger the, at the right time. Listen, yeah, there's a lot. And then that's, that's a whole, probably a whole podcast about guys and gals that they push, 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 push. And then all of a sudden it's like, where do they go? And then like, they're just gone. Champions. Um, uh, well, no, I mean, they just gone. Like, wait, what happened? Like they're, you know, um, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, Cause that, that's a, I had that whole fight with somebody for, and it was, it was like an hour. It was, it was the worst. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like I think on this card, what we have is, I like Serena Deeb and Tony Storm. Yes, give me that. Swerve and Cage. Yes, Mercedes Monet, Willow Nightingale, and Will Ospreay versus Roderick Strong for titles. Scream! We got to get two belts on people that we want to get titles on, and that's Mercedes Monet and Will Ospreay. Um, the, I think. Welcome to the Champions Club. Well, welcome um, to the company. Here's your belt. Uh. It, they got to knock the dust off Monet. We're going to put her up against the person who hurt her in Japan. Uh, yeah. Um, Willow's been working her ass off. I don't know if it's time to take a belt off of her, but. I can give you, listen, here's the thing. Two of the biggest names in wrestling are in your company. They're going to put belts on them. That's what Tony Khan does. And I'm not, look, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad move. Tapped out pot at gmail.com. Would you pull the trigger or not? I personally think I see if you're going, if you're going to strap the rocket, by the way, he, real hot take, Myron, Mercedes Monet shouldn't be wasting her time on the TBS championship. She should be straight to the AEW women's title picture. But she's not but, been back in wrestling long enough, Nick. She's not, she's just been walking around it, talking. She's been injured. Okay. But you, you the, the concept was they wanted to bring her in and present her like a star. Like she was the, she's the CEO. She's the top dog when it comes to that. Then she should go for that title. I don't care. Willow could be a thing she addresses later because there's history there. But, but she's that, not been wrestling. She's not ready to contend for a title of any kind. She's not been back in the ring. How many matches has she had since she's been back? Well, Myron, she's not clear. She hadn't been cleared yet. <laughs> She's, so she's, she's not been cleared, to, but we're going to give her a title match. Because she's Mercedes Monet. She's a star. But the, here's the thing. If we weren't so into the mud about whether she was cleared or not, and we were just focused on the fact that she's probably one of the top, you know, perceptual, like, perception. She's one of the biggest w- women stars. Thank you, WWE. That she's one of the biggest women stars on the planet. Put her straight into the title picture and project her as she's a top player. That's my. That's all I'm saying. You want my t- I love Willow Nightingale. But on the grand spe- on the on the pecking order of women in the world, she's not on that level. She's not. She's not Mercedes Monet. And because we've got to remember, whoop, go back a couple years ago, we had Sasha Banks, Charlotte, you know, Becky. Like that's the top women in the world. Willow's not on that. We've never had Willow in that conversation. She is a great talent. Yes, she's not there. So if Mercedes Monet, if you're trying to bring her over and for her to be the face of your women's, what's a, I'm hoping that's at some point what you're doing, considering the check you wrote, that better be your game plan for her. She should be fighting for the big title. That's just all I'm saying. That would be like saying, hey, we, uh, if they brought over John Cena, they're like, hey, you're going to go wrestle Christian Cage for the TNT title. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but not far. Because that's the level that you tried to put her on, not you, but that you know them. 
I, I just I'm frustrated because I, I I this is one of my things. Shouldn't she have to get back in the ring? Shouldn't she have to work up by wrestling matches? Shouldn't she have? And then all of a sudden, Myron becomes obsolete. I mean, listen, you 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 think WWE never just randomly threw somebody a title shot because how many title? Fair. Let's lay devil's advocate. By the way, I totally was for this move. By the way. Uh, so I'm literally being like just the devil's advocate here. Why in the world did Logan Paul deserve a U.S. title match? He had had like five matches at that point. Time for a commercial break. Um, <laughs> our next commercial is put on by the people at. What the brand the commercial? Prize picks. If you're a betting Uh-oh. man, I'm just saying it's a, look. I'm I, a, I mean, we're not, I'm a bet that you you enjoy contradicting me more than you do anything else no you just have to be fair just run the commercial (laughs) you still working on this it's two minutes to kick off who do i pick two words prize picks it's so easy prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy it's just you against the number simply pick the over under on two or more players and that's it you can win up to 10 times your money in just one day Join over 150,000 people who found a better way to play. Download the Prize Picks app today and get your first deposit match up to $100. That's right, man. Check out our friends over at Prize Picks. Look, if you're tired of your you're betting the house, blah, 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 no, just go straight in. If you think it's easier just to say, hey, I think Ronald Acuna has more than one and a half bases today, or I think X, insert X pitcher is going to have more than five and a half strikeouts today. Boom, it's just betting against yourself. You're not actually having to play against anybody else. There's no fantasy league, fantasy teams, none of that crazy stuff. Pricepicks.com. Go into the show notes, promo code's in there, and uh, check it out and uh, absolutely, you know, have fun, I man. Responsibly I don't want to talk about gamble. fantasies with any of these people that listen to the show. Hey, no kidding. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and get one more, man, before we get out one of here. One last question. Joe from Hoover, Alabama, up the road from where I grew up. Wonderful place, Hoover, Alabama. Are you guys talking about TNA a little more lately? Are there any matches you really want to see there? Uh, you know, it was so nice getting to see TNA wrestler Alan Angels the other day. Okay. Ah, great guy. Love his dad. And I think he's one of the guys I really want to see wrestle more. And who should he wrestle, Nick? I we we saw so we were down at action a couple weeks ago. And we saw Mustafa Ali down there defend that X Division Championship. And I was like, dude, that's a match that TNA needs. Oh, look, by the way, when I'm listing some of this, we're not saying these people have never actually wrestled each other. Like, I want to go see them. I want to see them all like on a pay-per-view or something like yeah. that. Um, Alan Angels versus Mustafa Ali for the X Division. Make it like an Ultimate X match or something like that. Make it where it's one of the old school, like uh, – I think that would be entertaining. Uh, look, are we partial because we're fans of Alan Angels? Yes. I've known him like, since he was just a little boy. I mean, like, it's okay, guys. You can be a fan of somebody. That's that's allowed. Yeah. Um, so I know also, by the way, this one's not. I will tell you, I have gained more respect for A.J. Francis, top dollar, call him what you will, since he's gone from the WWE for the hustle that this guy's doing out on the indies and all the places, whatever. Um, by the way, I'm not going to say where and don't guess, but we are going to see him soon. Oh, I, I've been told we will see him on a show soon. Well, that's good. Like I said, I, I, I did not figure him to be the type that would go out there and hustle the way he has. I hate to be a dick about it, but I did not figure he would be the guy that would go out there after he got cut and stick with wrestling and continue to go. But he has, and he's gone out there and defined himself, and I am very, very impressed. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing more out of him. And I look, put him, because here's the thing there is name value there. Yeah. Put him up against Moose one time, put him for the title, whatever headline a pay-per-view blah blah whatever you got to do um and by the way nick nemeth there Dolph ziggler to those who are trying to figure he could wrestle anybody (laughs) literally anybody on the roster i'm down yes yeah so i uh, I, i've i've always been a fan of the guy 
Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth, whatever you want to call him. I found a Dolph Ziggler t-shirt the other day. I got a Dolph Ziggler necklace, one of the DZ metal necklaces. I love, you know, I've always been a, a fan for. <laughs> Myra goes, stuff. it's a necklace slash choker. <laughs> I, I don't, I can't, I can't. I, I'm fat, Nick. Most necklaces are chokers on me. That's yeah. just, I have to like get other necklaces and, and hook them together. But the thing is, I really uh, am happy to see him still wrestling. Uh, I would love to see him swing through on the indie circuit through Atlanta and, and make a round, especially with disruptor bringing in so much great talent. Uh, you know, Matt probably get him down at action, Gary, get him come through, uh, through Southern honor, uh, get to meet a superstar. I watch, uh, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan. You know, it's just such a great time to be a wrestling fan and see these guys and, and no guys I know are, are hanging out and wrestling with these guys. Yeah, I'm look. Yeah. Some cool stuff happens when you're in there. Um, I will tell you, Myron. I had a very, very unique conversation last week that has progressed this week into something super special um, that I think I'm excited to do. And it will if we get it. I can't. I can't say names or anything. It's just it was a novel concept that they pitched to me. There is a talent. There's a national talent that pitched me a concept for something that will only be on our YouTube channel. That is it. Ooh. Well, Ooh. Patreon. YouTube, you'd have to be a member over there on YouTube, youtube.com, Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. You could do the search, the handles, at Tapped Out Pod, and, of course, patreon.com forward slash Tapped Out Pod. Man, the YouTube you know, is so easy, though, Nick. And it just it pops is. up right in your feed. It's just right there. You just, I mean, how many times a day do you look at YouTube? I look at it two or three times a day. A lot of times when I sit down at my desk, that's how I kill time. Or if I just, I don't really watch TV like most people. I just look at YouTube and I look I mean, at there it, and there's our premium feed. Yeah. There's our premium feed. And look, that's and, where all of the stuff's going to be. That's where all of the content's going to be. If it, even if it's a paid membership, it'll be behind the paywall there. Everything else over there. But it's Myron, not, it's, people don't understand. It's not like you don't have to dig and open doors to get behind the wall. Oh, no, once, no, no. It's once a, you're yeah. a member. It's right there with the rest of your YouTube stuff. Correct. It's just got a little green thing at the bottom. Yep. It says like member, members yep. only. Yep. You uh, don't have to go to a website. You don't have to dig through stuff. It's right with the rest of your YouTube videos, folks. Mm -hmm. Right there. And look, we understand, folks, by the way, we understand. Look, some are audio listeners. And of course, we are always going to there on Spotify, Apple Podcast, iHeartMedia, Amazon Music, and all that good stuff. But just to remember, all of that, a lot of the exclusive content is on YouTube. It is not the only thing that goes to the feed here on the audio platforms. It's the national show, this one, the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast, and then, of course, the Tapped In show, the indie show, that, that one. Those are on the feeds. That's it. Everything else is on YouTube. Um, look, I've had... Okay, I'm not going to say that on the air. Uh, like, Yeah, so the YouTube channel has everything patreon has everything and of course either one like we understand that like everybody's tricky about the point but dude, like you said on the youtube to be a member it literally says join now you just go click and you just you're in you can pay and you're in that simple nope. um so I we it. appreciate it. yeah i i'm i am too people laugh all the time i'm like dude i listen to a lot of stuff on youtube in my car i just minimize the picture down so the you know i'm not tempted to look at it and it's just a little small image in the corner of my phone and i i listen to pat mcafee a lot that way it's a lot easier than listening to podcasts because the podcast sometimes the podcast players are just as hard to do as anything else so i just put it on youtube there's audio compression there's all kinds of other things you know that happens on the on the anyway yeah. i look look we, i get it i'm a full i'm a full fan of the podcast but youtube i think is kind of the way everybody's kind of going and yeah. pushing but look if you do want to do a podcast we get it lipson.com is where you want to go to sign up because they'll do all the distribution they'll handle all of the heavy lifting for you lipson.com promo code tapped sign up and you can get up to 2 months for free um and before we get out of here, big shout out one more time, jmartinandcompany.com, yeah. pressure washing, window cleaning. I want to give him a shout out. He's helping me currently with a project that um, I, I can't say thank you enough that he's helping me take care of. So we I saw that I'm hoser always... Friday, hoarding yeah. up all his, uh, his cruel spice. I would have used more cruel spice yesterday. I was eating macaroni and cheese. Can't eat macaroni and cheese without cruel spice. Yeah. Oh, he's got to make another lot of that. 
Yep, that's a that's a that's a fact, man. J Martin and Company dot com, and of course you can always give them a look on Facebook and uh, message them as well. Uh, man, uh, well look, that's a lot, man, for the week. Uh, you got anything else before we get out of here, man? Uh, I really enjoyed doing that show. I really enjoy meeting people when we go out and talking to people. Uh, thank y'all so much for listening. Well, what's the old saying, brother? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.